There are almost 200 official countries in the world today, but there are dozens more breakaway states, determined to be separate, but officially not recognized. Some survive peacefully with their own borders, money, and presidents, but others are a magnet for terrorists and weapon smuggling, and have armies ready for a fight. Welcome to places that don't exist. China is now recognized as one of the world's great powers, and the West wants to keep it happy. But it wasn't always that way. During the time of Chairman Mao, the communists defeated Chinese nationalists, who then fled to the island of Taiwan and took over. Taiwan has since become a stable democracy, but China views it as a renegade province and wants it back. No major nation recognizes Taiwan as a separate country. Rock had agreed to show me around Beijing. What's this building here? This is memory hall for Mao. Chairman Mao. Oh, yes, Mr. Mao. Mr. Mao. As we wandered around Tiananmen Square, where demonstrators were massacred in 1989, guards repeatedly tried to stop us filming. Well, they've left us to film. Obviously, there's still a lot of sensitivity about what goes on in Tiananmen Square because of, shall we say, it's past history. It's 20 to 9 in the morning. But even though it's this early, you can see this line here of visitors shuffling forward to see Mao's tomb. Although China is fast becoming an economic superpower, communists still retain control and the country remains far from democratic. Ah, look at this. Beijing 2008. While China is hosting the Olympics in 2008, Taiwanese politicians have suggested they sever all remaining ties with Beijing that year. But China warns it will attack its renegade province if it tries to break away, regardless of the Olympics. Uh, the police have just come to look at our permit, which might be a bit of a problem because we've passed the time at which we're supposed to be filming, so maybe we, maybe we should politely leave. China wants Taiwan back and has said it will use force if necessary. Its army, the largest in the world, has been developing advanced weapons in recent years to take on the sophisticated Taiwanese military. And as I discovered, it's still hiring. This is for recruitment for the army. Yes, it is. Right. And it's the performance here, recruiting for the army as well. You see the, you see those. Uh, I can see all the army officers. Yeah. yeah. who were going up to, to take leaflets to talk to <laughs> This is a poster that's by the side of the military display, and it's talking entirely about Taiwan. It says underneath here that Taiwan is part of China, but that some foreign powers are providing weapons and support to Taiwan and trying to keep it away from the motherland. Having this poster here, which also has a picture of the Taiwanese president here, is a means of reminding the Chinese people why they need to spend money on the Chinese military, because they have to counter this sort of threat. But China does appear to be changing, as a visit to the main antiques market in Beijing seems to show. This is a shop devoted to Chairman Mao. In the past, people would almost have to bow down reverentially to this type of thing. And now, they just have it as a curiosity. This is a poster from the time of the 
Cultural Revolution saying we must recover Taiwan, we must get it back. I left China for Taiwan. You can't actually travel directly from Taiwan to mainland China or from mainland China to Taiwan. You have to travel by somewhere else. So we've come via Hong Kong. Hello. Lovely to meet you, Simon. Hello. Nice to meet you, finally. <laughs> Sen Lun, a local journalist, was my guide in Taiwan. First stop was a Taiwanese airbase, wrestling with the latest American-made fighters, ready to defend against an attack by China. Look at the size of this. Warning, do not roll, tumble or drop. <laughs> Nobody drop it. Oh God, they're carrying it. They're carrying the missile. It's what if one of them slips? There's holes in the ground. What if they fall over? I'm really impressed. Uh, I didn't know what we had. We owned uh, one of the best plants in the world. You didn't know? <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> it looked very good. <laughs> Have you seen this sign? Doesn't exactly fill you with confidence. Danger, landmines. Ah. We were on Jinmen, a Taiwanese island just a few miles off the coast of China. Well, that's disappointing. So we can't go onto the beach? Yes, we can. Look, it says danger mines. Well, our driver says that it's safe for us to go onto the beach. So we'll cross fingers and go for a walk on the sand. Over there, in the distance, we can see China. It's a bit misty, but you can quite clearly make out the buildings and the town. It's like a city. They, they are the enemies. <laughs> 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 They're just so close now. Have you, have you seen the mainland before from Taiwan? No, this is my first time. So you've never seen China before? I have never seen China from this short distance. <laughs> when you were growing up, what were you being told about them over there? Here, we grow bananas and we eat bananas. And they only get to eat the skins of bananas. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can see the, the rusting metal object, on top of that building. They had the loudest, largest loudspeakers in the world, and they used to broadcast propaganda to the Chinese mainland. What did they used to say? Taiwan is a treasure island. Taiwan and is a treasure are, island. We are free China, <laughs> and we will come to save you from hell. The Taiwanese fought artillery duels with the Chinese from here for 20 years. It led to a bizarre agreement where each side shelled the other on alternate days and they both took Sunday off. You can see here, these are the artillery shells that have been fired by the Chinese. Not all of them exploded and some of them actually contained propaganda leaflets, so they're still intact. You can see here, they've marked them up, and each of these little bits is going to become a knife. Which he's making now. It'll take a long time to use up the shells, because there were around a million fired from China, and each shell can make about 60 knives. So we can make another 60 million. That will take a while. Do you ever sell any of these knives to China? Yes, we've been selling the knives to people in Xiamen and Shanghai, especially in the last two years. People in China don't feel it's strange because our knives are famous and they know about them from radio programs in China. Taiwanese have dug a huge network of tunnels all over this island. And this looks like a deep one. Yeah. 
Thank you. They're just showing us what they do. They're not about to fire on China. At least I hope they're not. The Taiwanese military will let you see this, but they won't let us show or film what it's aimed at, which is the Chinese mainland. What does this say, Sandra? It says we, we will recover the mainland. Yeah, we will recover the mainland. Yes. Is this still something that the Taiwanese military believe in? Do you still think you will take back the mainland? It's not our question. Okay. Oh, not authorized. Oh, okay. It's a politics. So that's a political question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Political question. On a, on a military question. But we want a peace. Uh, we, we want a peace. Uh, so no more war? We hope so. These are M60 American tanks. Although America doesn't recognize Taiwan as a separate country, it supplies the island with military equipment. President Bush has said the United States will do whatever it takes to defend Taiwan if the Chinese attack. These Taiwanese frogmen are trained to sabotage Chinese warships. They're one of the first lines of defense. It's not very often happen that you will come by a dozen, dozens of naked men. <laughs> We left Jinmen and flew to Taiwan's capital, Taipei. The city is dominated by Taipei 101, the tallest building in the world. Wow. Now it looks like the tallest building in the world. When you're right underneath it, oh, it's incredible. It looks as though it's towering over on top of you as well. It actually hasn't opened yet and you can still smell in the air. There's a still a smell of paint because they're still building it. But hopefully we're going to be able to go to the top. There's men walking on the roof. Can you see on the glass? Oh, there are little men <laughs> over there. Do yeah, you see yeah, that? Yeah. The Taiwanese are good at business. They've got the shops open first. He's a very cross security guard. Looks very severe. Shall we go? Yeah. Unless we've got a pass, we're barely allowed to go up on the escalator. No? So we've got our badge now. So we're allowed to walk around. Without this, we would be in all sorts of trouble. Oh my gosh. Ooh! Really, uh, top of the world. We really are. Do you get vertigo? No. Nope. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm now at the top of the tallest building on the entire planet. This is Taipei 101. And this is Taipei, the capital city of Taiwan. One of the most powerful economies in the world. Most states don't even acknowledge, they don't have embassies here and they've just let the situation between Taiwan and China fester for decades until there's the possibility of a serious conflict between the two that would affect us all. That's colossal. It's a big snake. I don't know if you saw the sign here. The snakes sold and cooked at this store are definitely not protected wild animals. Oh. This is uh, honey and blood. Honey and blood. Yeah, yeah. Just tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What snake is that from? Yeah. Uh, a kind of a cobra. Yeah, it's from a cobra? It's like a king cobra. King cobra. King cobra. Yeah. I'm a bit wary about this. All right, just have a little sip. Very good, very good. You know? It's OK. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Oh, you finished it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. 
And this is a sex shop. Look, you can buy a hummingbird vibrator. Ooh. Not you personally, I mean. <laughs> On the outskirts of the market, business becomes a bit seedier. So these are what, brothels or...? Yeah, these are the places, I think. The brothels are mainly staffed by girls brought over illegally from the Chinese mainland. Later that night, Sen Lung took me to a concert by Six Plus, one of the most popular boy bands in Taiwan. Hello. He's the drummer. Many of the young here used to think of themselves as immigrant Chinese rather than Taiwanese, but that's now changing. I'm very hungry. <laughs> I've obviously done this many times. The band's lyrics are sung in Taiwanese. song seemed to be quite patriotic. Can you tell us a little bit about the lyrics and what inspired you with that song? In the Taika song, we describe Taiwanese culture to make people identify with being Taiwanese. You know the term Taika, Taiwan guest, was originally a derogatory name the Chinese gave to the people who came to Taiwan. The reason we use this word is to try and give it a new meaning, to talk about the people who've grown up here in Taiwan. Well, you can see lots of girls waiting for the band. True pop stars. Morning, morning. I like how they get the kids to clean up, but can you imagine them trying to do that at a school in, in Britain? The kids would, kids would revolt. This is how Taiwanese schools start the day. It's 10 to 8. In 10 minutes, the flag will be raised, and already below, children are gathering for assembly. This used to be the biggest school in the world. It's incredible how disciplined the, the kids are. If you look, they've been told to march, they all march in line, and there's martial music playing as well. What's her secret for maintaining order amongst nearly 5,000 children? It's like controlling a line of Taiwanese donkeys. They're all connected to each other by ropes, so you just have to know which one to pull and the rest will follow. This is Taiwanese language lesson. Going on now? The government used to ban children from speaking in Taiwanese. They wanted them to speak Chinese because they believed one day they'd return to the mainland and take it back from the communists. This was all done in Taiwanese until a few years ago that would have been illegal but now they're taught in Taiwanese, they have operas in Taiwanese and they play traditional Taiwanese music. <laughs> Thank you, bye-bye.
We visited a women's detention center housing illegal immigrants from the Chinese mainland who were due to be returned. Many were promised legitimate jobs, but when they arrived found themselves forced into prostitution. Were you able to work as a babysitter or, or have you had to do other work? They asked me to do the ladies' job to be with the clients, that thing. Are you saying you've had to work in a brothel? Yes. We come here because we want to work as babysitters and clerks, not this type of work. Most of the people here have been tricked into coming, like me, and some have even been drugged. We're now going to see what they call the baby room, where they keep the babies of women who are being held here. So also women have children while they're here because they're held for such a long time. So they're there as well. These women and their children are only allowed home when China agrees to accept another boatload. Many are held here for months. I feel definitely it's inhuman treatment um, for them even though the Taiwanese government is saying they're providing them with food and care, but like the space and the fact that they don't have freedom. As a Taiwanese, it's something I can't imagine. Thank you. kindly said we can come out on the boat with them. Uh, they're looking for smugglers, people smuggling drugs, people smuggling goods every day. They operate 24 hours a day. Over here on the horizon you can see Chinese mainland fishing boats. So they're right on the edge of what they're, where they're allowed to fish. If they came any further, they'd be in Taiwanese waters. appear to be chasing down a couple of vessels. What, what's happening now? These are tourist boats from China. They want to see the banner that's on this island. It's become a tourist spot. They've already crossed the dividing line, so we're warning them and sending them back. So this sign here says three principles of the people to unify China. And it's basically anti-communist propaganda directed at the Chinese. There's a Chinese boat, look all the Chinese tourists on it. We've now got a situation where tourist boats are coming across the water to look at the sign. But the Taiwanese Coast Guard is turning them back. What surprises me is the number of people on the boats. I mean, the boats were absolutely packed. They're saying, Get out, leave our waters. Let's wave at least. <laughs> well, we've come to what's supposedly an ancient Taiwanese village, built in the style of the, how the original inhabitants of Taiwan used to live before the Chinese came over from the mainland in the 1940s. But it appears to be a little bit more like a theme park than a cultural heritage attraction. It seems to provide evidence that the Taiwanese Aboriginals had quite an advanced space program. The native inhabitants of Taiwan were treated appallingly by the Chinese nationalists who retreated to the island after being defeated on the mainland by the communists. Marginalized for decades, many Taiwanese aborigines have now been reduced to working as tourist attractions in theme parks. <laughs> So here they've got a display of human heads. In fact, it says here, display frame for enemy heads, based on an original structure of about 1850. 
You know who's had their home? Chinese people's heads who invented their lands. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, maybe it's quite appropriate that we have this here then. Yeah. Oh my god. Have you seen these? He's even got a little head under his arm. Most Taiwanese are originally from China, but it's hard for them to visit the mainland. Unlike the real world, in this model park, it's easy to cross from Taiwan to China. This is the inland container yard. So what is this supposed to be, the national airport? OK, that's enough of that. <laughs> this is the sin. This is the Sun Yat-sen Nation National Freeway. <laughs> Stop laughing. While many older Taiwanese still pine for China, the younger generation now thinks of itself as truly Taiwanese and seems in no hurry to unify with the mainland. Does your dad think of himself as being Taiwanese or as Chinese? I would say he thinks of himself as a Chinese. And what do you think of yourself? Um, I would think of myself as Taiwanese. <laughs> Does the older generation still think uh, it wants to return to China? It's still one of their dreams, and one day that dream might just come true. You haven't been to China yourself, I think. I have not, but this is as far as I can get <laughs> right now. <laughs> But China remains adamant Taiwan cannot be independent and must reunite with the mainland, as a senior government official back in Beijing made very clear. Taiwan, Taiwan has never been a country. It is still not a country. The Chinese people will not allow Taiwan to be separated from the motherland. The Chinese people will safeguard their sovereignty and territorial integrity, and we have the ability to break any intention to make Taiwan independent. Is the Chinese government concerned that a conflict between China and Taiwan might involve the United States? I don't believe the American people will be prepared to spill their blood, spill their blood for Taiwanese independence. Yeah. Hey. Go. Hey. Go. Hey. Oh. 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 Oh.